Hi everyone and welcome to our Thursday night life group special, uh, getting together, doing life group and right from the word go, uh, those of you that are jumping on board, whether it be the Facebook platform or the YouTube platform, won't you just put there in the comment section, doing life together because that's what we were created to do yeah. is life it's together a it's, you know the new normal it's a new to, normal yes, yeah. come on live yeah. and do it like this so we want to welcome you yeah thank you for um using your data to get online i yes. know it's expensive so we're not going to be long tonight we're going to respect your data and thank you to all of those who are sacrificing it to come to life group tonight so we just want to tell you we love you and we're looking forward to an awesome time tonight. Yes, absolutely. And then tell us from which uh, city or which town uh, you're watching from, uh, or maybe the country that you're from. We always love to acknowledge the city or the country, uh, but really it's just wonderful that uh, we can come into your homes. And thank you so much for uh, allowing us to come in and really just to uh, gather around the word, have a bit of a chit chat. Maybe you've had supper already and, you can grab yourself a cup of tea or maybe decaf coffee or normal coffee. I don't know if you're like me, then I can't have coffee at this nice. time of night because it'll keep me up. Uh, but it's just great to be able to get together with uh, other believers. And right from the word go. And all the folk from Hillcrest, yeah. life groups, all the Absolutely. Phoenix life groups, we want to welcome you tonight. Yeah. And welcome you from our home to, to your, your home. home. Right. So, uh, watching with us is uh, Asta Chetty. Thank you so much for joining us, Jackie. We see you. Good evening to you, Nolene. And everybody's doing the comments, doing life together. We are. That's what it's all about. Venetia Singh. Thank you so much. Hello, Shada. Uh, Hello. Great to have you with us Nanda tonight. And uh, Nanda Misu is watching as well. Yes. Great. Sabina. Ashlyn, hi. All right. Who else have you got on your one? Uh, Lisa. Lisa, hi. Chantal is watching, doing life together. Thank you, Glenda. Thank Mount you. Franklin's watching from Mount Edgecombe. Wonderful. And I see Hazel. Pastor Mark Ilg and, and Pastor Megan uh, uh, Ilgen, yeah, from Good Hope Christian Center, Hello, all the guys. way from Cape Town. Great to have you with us. Yes. We are doing life together. And I see there's Jackie as well. God bless you. Have, say hello to Colin for us, Jackie. Uh, Janelle is watching, Daisy is watching, Arnoff is watching as well. Conrad, great to have you with us tonight. Conrad Lowe, uh, who else do we have? Michelle Phillip, uh, thank you so much. Great to have you with us, you and Desmond. We are doing life together and that's wonderful. Don't forget to like our pages. Don't forget to uh, subscribe if you're on the YouTube uh, platform. Let's quickly go across to the YouTube platform right now. And uh, let's just have a look and see. I know my page is just refreshing, so we're just going through uh, the format of that. But great uh, to have you with us, those of you that are watching. Sitem uh, Bushlele is watching. Thank you so much, Roy. Uh, all the way from uh, Phoenix is watching Doing Life Together. Beverly, uh, Doing Life Together. Thank you. Sharon Chetty is there as well. We are doing life together. Danielle, we are doing life together. Quasi. Quasi is there. Yes. Um, and Lindell was husband. And Linda, Quasi. Please, uh, yeah, please give Linda a squeeze and a hug and a kiss yeah. from all of us. Uh, Beverly and John, great to have you with us as we uh, feast around the wood. And we've got a great word to, to teaching tonight. Uh, Sharon is watching. Geraldine Dunpal is watching as well. And uh, Denise as well. And yes, we are doing life, life together. And we are obviously cognizant of the fact that this is data, this is your time. But So let's get into the word straight away. And this week, of course, as you know, the notes are available on the church app and those notes are for you. There are some words that are missing and you can just uh, join in as we mention. there's some other lovely things on the church There's a whole, too, so a whole lot of lot stuff of for the folks. Things. I think yeah. there's a, a free uh, ebook as well on yeah. there. So. There's make, all kinds of stuff available. there. And so just to get yourself fed with the word of God, because the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so we want to keep on. It's the keep on, keep on. We can do it once and maybe the third day, but can we keep on doing it? And so this is what this is about. It's encouraging us, motivating us to keep on getting the word in. And so this week, we're going to look at the difference between a carnal man and a spiritual man. 
Actually, we were saying that there's three types of men when the Bible speaks about men and obviously women. It's, it speaks about three kinds of men. The first one is natural man, the natural man. And that's the man that doesn't know Christ. All right. Then we get the guy that does know Christ, but he's carnal. And then thirdly, we get the spiritual man who knows Christ and, of course, is spiritual. And our aim is to get to the spiritual. Amen. All of us. All of us. Yes. All of us. All of us. Our aim is to get, uh, hopefully, to get born again from the natural to being born again. So we're, so we're now born again. And then from being born again, our job is to grow in God. So we do that as we, as we do life together. All right. So uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. I'd like to begin from there because that's powerful. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, if you've got your Bible. And I'd like to begin to read from verse 9. This has always intrigued me. I've always loved to read this verse of Scripture. But 1 Corinthians 2 and 9 says, uh, But as, as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things, not thing, not the thing, but the things, plural, the many things that God has, which God has prepared for those who love him. But then verse 10 says, but, but God has revealed them to us through his spirit. So in other words, if we, if, if we are spiritual, we get in the word on the inside of us and we're praying and fellowshipping and, and, and having fellowship with other believers and we're getting into praise and worship and all of that, then it means that our eyes can see and our ears can hear and it can enter into our heart the things that God has in store for us. See, so God is saying, you know what? If you stay carnal and if you stay fleshly, then your eye won't see yeah. and your ears will never hear and your heart will never know the enormous things, the abundance of things that God has in store for us. So I thought that that was brilliant. So it says, but God has revealed them. And then it says, verse 11, for what man knows the things of the man, except the spirit of the man, which is in him. And remember, we were saying how that we are tripartite beings. 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, we are spirit, we are soul, and, and we are body. All right. And when we get saved, a spirit man that was dead unto God or dead unto Christ comes alive unto God. We are made alive. A spirit man, God is spirit, we are spirit. And the way that we come to know God is our spirit knows the spirit of God. All right. And so in instantly we are justified. Instantly we are made right. Okay. Even though the rest of us, our mind, our soul, our thoughts, our, you know, thinking, our wills, our wills our still bodies. might not be in line with God, but we're born again. And so if we died right there and then, we would go on to meet the Lord and be with the Lord in heaven. So that's important that we understand that, all right? And then it says here, uh, um, even so we know the things of God, except even so no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Now, we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak not in words, which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Now, listen, verse 14. But the natural man, that's the unsaved man, the unsaved person. The unsaved, the natural man, does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. So I thought I'd just bring the third dynamic there, which is the natural man. That's the, that's the person that doesn't know Jesus Christ. And it's not about how, how much education you have and how educated you are that you can come to know God that comes through the new birth. It is the miracle of all miracles when the Spirit of God makes Jesus and what he did on the cross very real to you and you are born again. So it takes going from natural, a natural man to being born again, takes uh, the, the miracle of all miracles. Uh, God and, takes up that stony heart. Right. He does heart surgery on us yeah. and he puts in us a heart of flesh. And that heart of flesh makes us sensitive to the Holy Spirit so that our eyes can hear, 
and so that our ears can hear the wonderful plans, purposes, and destiny that God has for us. Right. So let's have a look then. So we're just going to look at now that I'm saved, I can either be carnal or I can be spiritual. Let's look at the characteristics of the carnal believer. And the carnal man is someone who allows their old nature to dominate the way in which they conduct themselves in this world, okay? So if we don't pray, if we don't fellowship, if we don't get together with other believers, if we never get to lift up our hands to worship together, uh, if we don't get the word on the inside of us, what, what happens is the flesh begins to dominate and effectively we become carnal. Our, our, our behavior is carnal. Our thinking is carnal. Our motives are carnal because we are wrapped up in this body of flesh. See? So by default, we just go back to default and the, and the carnal part of us takes over. So let's have a look at some of the characteristics of the carnal man. The carnal believer first of all, is immature in the things of God. When you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3, the next chapter, verse 1, it says, And our brethren could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes uh, in Christ. He says, you know what? You're immature. You're actually babes. So immaturity is a sign that we are carnal believers. Another characteristic is the carnal believer is what? Still drinking milk. Drinking milk. I mean, it would be strange if like a 10-year-old would still be drinking milk, you know, the milk from the bottle. There would be something wrong. Now, you go from meat and then eventually uh, from milk, I mean, to then uh, a little bit of soup or whatever and, and then a little bit of solids, right? So that's, that's the diet changes as we grow, as we mature. And it's the same in the kingdom of God, all right? So that scripture is found in verse 2. Of chapter three, he said, I fed you with milk and, and not with solid food, for until now you are not able to receive it. And even now you are still not able, for you are still carnal. And Paul, Paul saying, Guys, I'm having a problem. Remember, he was writing this letter to the church in Corinth, and there was a lot of sensuality, a lot of uh, pagan stuff and ideologies that were floating around there. And if they, and you know, the, the, the longer they succumbed to all of these teachings, the more they stayed in the shallow end of God, the more they just kept on drinking the milk, the more they just were immature. And he says, you know what? We've got to move on and grow in God. The third characteristic is that he manifests the work of the flesh. And then Paul says, well, let me tell you what it is. He said, for where there is envy, where there is strife and, and divisions among you, he says, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? So these are some of the symptoms that we can, you know, look into our own lives and say, hey, no, no, not at all. Absolutely. And the fact that you you, maybe you can identify, you know what, I'm I'm immature in some things. Maybe there's some things that I don't know when it comes to the word of God and I'm still in the milk, whatever it might be. But a whole aspect of this is to say you don't need to stay there. You can grow in God. That's and so, the most wonderful thing about the Word of God because it changes the perspective of how we see our lives like when we, we saw our lives yeah. when, before we were saved. Yes. And I think some of the um, things that make us carnal or that um, make us immature is, you know, things like not being able to forgive. Mm. And also, um, and that, that that also retards growth. That's right. Because it just becomes like a cancer on the inside of you, and easily and, offended. You know, some people. Yeah. You just, I mean, you didn't even look at them. They thought you looked at them, and mm. you didn't, and suddenly they offended. And we and offense all comes to, to all. Yes, it, it comes to all. Yeah. And so, and that's how God is checking us to say, listen. You can grow a little bit more. You can grow a little bit more in that area. So it's all part of sanctification. Absolutely. It's our ongoing. It's, a, it's an ongoing it's process. Time, yes. But the, the important thing is, you know, to bring this into your into perspective and into looking at it into your heart and seeing the areas that need uh, need need change. And, and you it's, just being and it's open. Easy to look at others and say, yes, yeah. they need oh, that yeah. help. And oh, yeah. yes, it's them. Absolutely. And I think, you know. Yeah. But a lot of times God's saying, no, look into your heart. You know, mm. Look at your heart. I'm showing you your heart. 
And I think, and in the end, we'll see why it is that God doesn't want us to remain, you know, carnal believers, because as carnal believers, we can't, not only do we not help ourselves, we right. can't help others as well. And that's the key, all right? So let's move on. That's the negative. And if we've identified some areas of carnality, it's not the end. We can put right. We can just be open to the Holy Spirit. You know, repentance is still a real thing in, in the kingdom of God. We can repent and say, God, I, I'm sorry. And we just can move and, yeah, and grow in, in and that area. Amen. Yeah. So let's look at the spiritual man. What is the spiritual man? Well, that person is one who lives in the power of the Holy Spirit. And guys, I want to just tell you that um, it's impossible to live not just a Christian life, but a victorious Christian life without the power of the Holy Spirit. That's and why the Bible says it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by my Spirit. spirit. Says yeah. Because you, you can never walk in this. You can never love somebody like God loves them. Without the power right. of the Holy Spirit. You can never do it in yourself. And there are, are a lot of believers who are just living average type of life. Some, you know, one step forward, ten back all the time. And the reason why they're living that life is because they're trying to live it in their own strength, what they have, you know, my education, my intellect, my Religious wisdom. Rituals. And or they trying to please God and, and this, you know, the cross wasn't somehow enough. And so I have to try and work up some kind of a righteousness and I've got to try and get to whatever it is. I don't know what it is, but actually it's living in the power of the Holy Spirit. And then it goes on to say the spiritual man is one who allows Christ to rule his life. And that's what being born again is all about. And there was a big difference. I remember, you know, I wasn't much of a church goer. I, was, I wasn't saved anyways, but we used to go to church three times a year, um, Easter time, Christmas time, and maybe some other random time. I don't know what time that was. But the point is that we would go to church on a Sunday and then Monday through to Saturday, we would just revert back to our old self. And then come Sunday or the next time we went to church, it was all this holy stuff. And, and so Jesus was really outside of the rest of our lives. We were living 99.9% .9 of our lives without Christ. We come to church, we put Christ in, we leave church, we leave Christ there, you know, and so that's how it was. But actually, a spiritual man is one who allows Christ to rule his life. So Every he's aspect. So to sit on the throne, throne. of our lives. And Monday got, through to Sunday. And we've got to make Jesus the president of our lives, not just a resident in our lives. Yeah. And, you know, when the president speaks, everybody does it. Look in COVID here. The president spoke. Everything everybody went does to it. close. When he talks, when he talks that's, that's, it. that's it. Exactly. So when Jesus is the president of our lives, when this word talks to us, yes, we do it. We say, yes, sir, you're the president of our lives. You're not just a resident in our lives. Yeah. And that's what your note says. It says that Jesus is not just present, but he is preeminent, which is what Joy was saying. He's not just present, but president. President. And then he's not just one that resides in the spiritual man's life, but he presides over that life. Mm -hmm. And so importantly, the condition of his heart is right. And I think... That's the huge, huge difference, all right? So let's have a look and see uh, what the spiritual man is, some of the characteristics. Well, if the carnal man is immature, the spiritual man is mature. And this is what I want to say about maturity, is that it is in, maturity is important in your walk with God. When you fail to become mature or grow, we may go back to the world because strife, cause strife because of ignorance, become stumbling blocks to others or become worldly and indifferent to the things of God. However, when we grow up and become mature, we are able to reproduce and help others to reach maturity. And I think that is so, so key. And isn't it part of our vision for people to find God, find freedom and make a difference? And, you know, discover your purpose and make, make a, a difference. difference. Yeah. So if, if we never discover our purpose and discovering your purpose is our, our spirit man becoming alive mm. and changing, 
how are we going to make a difference in this right. world? Absolutely. Exactly. And how we, we, we're not going to make, and we can't help ourselves. Yeah. If we can't help ourselves, how are we going to help others? And the whole aspect of Jesus saving us and leaving us on this earth uh, is so that we can be a light shining in a dark place and That's we right. can be the salt of the earth. Uh, but if the salt has lost its flavor, well, then you're no good to yourself and then you're no good to anybody else, right? Mm -hmm. So the point of all of this is that God wants us to grow. Um, and he wants us because and as we grow, we experience all the blessings, the miracles that God has, the abundance. Right. That, that Those are all the byproducts, you see. But the fundamental thing is that we fail to reveal Christ mm -hmm. in this world because we're immature, we're at strife, and we're causing division and all of that kind of a stuff. So the spiritual man is mature, but then also the spiritual man is taught by the Holy Spirit, okay? Now, that doesn't mean that you're not open to, for example, we're teaching you and you're receiving teaching as well. Um, you have the Holy Spirit on the inside of you, and, and the Bible tells us that we need to judge the spirits, but, uh, but, you, but we are all open to receiving teaching and receiving instruction from one another. And if that teaching is different to the word of God, then you have the right to reject that and to, you know, close your ears to that. But he's saying, actually, we are all taught by the Holy Spirit. And then not only that, but you notice one of the things about the spiritual man is that he has the, he has the ability, the spiritual man is able to discern. And if you look at verse 14 in 1 Corinthians 2, it says the natural man, remember that man is not born again, unregenerate, doesn't know Jesus Christ. It says that the natural man does not receive the things of the spirit for they are foolishness to him for nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. So in other words, when we come to know Christ, uh, we, we have the ability to discern, to discern. And it takes discernment because this Bible was written, uh, there are 66 books written over a span of uh, 1,500 years. And I think there's about 30 to 40 different authors. Um, and yet it's one book and it has one message. How is that so? Because the Holy Spirit moved upon those, all the authors to make this one story. What's the point, Pastor? The point I'm trying to make is that it takes the discerning of spirits to understand a book that was essentially written by the Holy Ghost. Even though he used man and they penned these words, Paul penned the words, Peter penned the words, but we have to, uh, by the discerning of spirits, we come to understand. So that's why you might have heard me say, you know, you can read the Bible and you'll just get a whole lot of facts and knowledge and, you know, maybe some scientific evidence about this and archaeological evidence about this and something else, whatever. And that we call the Logos, the Logos from Genesis to Revelation. If you just read it and all you're getting is facts and information and knowledge, then it's just Logos. But if the Holy Ghost breathes upon the word, then the Logos becomes Rhema. And that's why the Bible says the letter kills, but the Spirit, Spirit gives life. life. Because Absolutely. if you just read it like that, mm. it will always condemn you. It will always be yeah. a book that's saying you bad, you you know, everything about you is wrong. But when you allow the Holy Spirit to reveal what God's saying to you, it will always be a book of encouragement yeah. to you. And your spirit, man, you see, if whatever is in your head, the information that's in your head, you can lose that. But when you receive it in your spirit, that becomes revelation. And you remember when Jesus asked the disciples, who do men say that I am? And uh, some said, you're John the Baptist. Some say you this, some say you that. And they were all trying to rely on their mental ability, you know, on their IQ. But Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father, which is in heaven. In other words, you went beyond Logos 
and you got a rhema. This was quickened to you. You were able to discern, even though the Holy Ghost had not come, Jesus had not been crucified yet, yet it was a divine moment, a divine visitation, where Peter's spirit discerned, this is the Christ. This is the son of the living God. And that truth, you can never take that truth away from Peter. I believe it's that truth that even though Peter denied Jesus three times, yeah. it was that truth that he had on the inside of them that eventually caused him to stand up on the day of Pentecost and preach the best sermon he'd ever preached and 3,000 people got saved. So uh, the spiritual man is able to discern. And then thirdly, the spiritual man has the mind of Christ. Amen. And you don't just automatically get the mind of Christ. I wish it, I wish it yeah. was so like that. But that comes, as you know, Romans 12 and 2, by not being conformed to this world, but being transformed by the renewing of the mind. Casting down the uh, imagination. That yeah, and you got to as you as you read the word, and the word becomes rhema on the inside of you. There's a washing. The, it's like the, the 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 word is like soap. Actually, it's a detergent, right. and we're washed by the word as the, as the, as the word comes. It renews. It washes. If there's no renewing and no washing, we just remain carnal, carnal in our thinking. You see, because you have to realize a lot of you just came straight from work tonight. Maybe you haven't had supper yet. So you are influenced by what you saw, what you heard, what you felt, what you touched in the physical world that you lived in today. And a lot of that, of course, you know, is negative, negative sentiment, pessimism, uh, all kinds of stuff that's floating bad out, news. bad news, it's all kinds of stuff. And, that, and that's having an effect. So thank God that we can come around the word and allow the word to get to get to to wash off a little bit of that carnality and fleshliness and let's get a little bit spiritual. Amen. So that's the purpose of that tonight. Amen. Amen. Um, we're going to look at the vision connection in just a moment, but let's go back to our various platforms tonight. I'm so glad to have all of you that are watching. Um, Aaron Pariachi, thank you so much. I see Carol is there. I see Flora is watching. Great to have you with us. Saraj, is, is watching. Thank you so much. Melaine is watching. Uh, Cyril Mudley, he says there, the flesh profits nothing. The flesh profits nothing. That's right. Sandra, great to have you with us tonight. Kozi, Pastor Kozi. Uh, Nompumalelo is watching. Great to have you with us. Uh, Chanel is watching. Uh, Sunny Nadu is watching. Victor, Hello, Vico from the UK. Great Carol to have you with us. Watching online. Carol is watching. Gavin Amen. Jacobs. Yeah. Who else? Have you got some other folks there? Pastor Quanda. Pastor Quanda is watching. Yeah. Carol's watching. Jillian. Jillian's watching. Jillian Tambu is watching. Who else do you have there? Chris so all of these uh, phenomenal people, thank you so much for watching with us tonight. And just getting around the word, I see Erwin is watching. Nonchlantla. Dubazana is watching. God bless you. Great to have you with us. Uh, Nosipo is watching. Praise yes, the Lord. Timothy and uh, Nosipo says, when you allow the spirit, you receive revelation. Absolutely. that You got it. Yes. Stella is watching. Uh, Salomo. Thank you so much, Salomo. Great to have you with us tonight. Uh, who else do we have? Surin is watching. The Logos becomes Rhema. That's right. Um, we have Glenda Bronze is watching. Um, great to have you all with us. Now, this coming Sunday, we're going to have a, another epic Sunday. Yes. And uh, I'm going to be continuing to preach on uh, the church that Jesus is coming back for. And so that's going to be a great time. But uh, we're going to end this tonight by looking at the vision connection. And it says there that you are either a carnal man or you have moved to maturity as a spiritual man. That's our prayer for every one of you. Remember, we are like the Joshua's, Mr. and Mrs. Joshua. And our job is to get you across the Jordan and into the land that flows with milk and honey. Okay. Some people say, Pastor, isn't that when we die that we cross from this life to the next life? Well, I don't, I'm not expecting to encounter giants and fortified cities when we get into heaven. So it's the life that God desires for us to live while we're on this earth. And of course, we're going to encounter adversities. 
we're going to encounter because the devil doesn't want us to prosper in God, to move in God, to grow in God. All right. Um, so our job is to do that. And that's what the vision of the Durban Christian Center really is. If you think about it, is it's reap. The reap vision is reaping everything Jesus accomplished, reaping everything Jesus accomplished for the glory of God. For the glory of God. And Jesus didn't only accomplish salvation for us when he died. There's healing, there's deliverance, there's peace, right. there's abundance, there's joy, right? There's all kinds of things that he purchased on the cross. So uh, that's our job. Our job is to get you to experience the land, your land, that flows with milk and honey. So next week, we'll have a look how we can get to move from being carnal to being spiritual. That's the good news. You don't have to stay carnal. You don't have to stay in the shallow end, just dipping in your toes while everybody else goes in and is thoroughly blessed. And you're standing and saying, God, what about me? God decides that we all move from the 30-fold, the 60-fold to the 100-fold. That's the progression of God. If you look at it in the Bible, it's always 30, 60, 100. Three, three, three dimensions, all right? And you can see that, for example, the tabernacle of Moses was the outer court, holy place, holy of holies. Mm -hmm. And it's like that throughout the whole Bible. So next week, we're going to look at that, all right? If we're going to reach this nation for Jesus, we have to move to maturity. I think many of you would agree with us tonight. We have to, come on, let's forget oh, about our divisions. Let's forget about pointing fingers at each other, and let's get on into maturity. Let's, let's, let's begin to agree with one another. Amen? Uh, and remember that, yeah, this is great. Look at this. It says, babies cannot disciple other babies. I don't know of a baby that can take care of another baby. Another baby. It's, I've never heard of that before. It's, un, it's unheard of, right? Not only that, but babies cannot discern and number three, babies cannot lead. I don't know of a baby that is, has the ability to lead, okay? So, family, it is our prayer that every one of you grow, every one of you develop, and every one of you reach your full potential in Christ. Because as my wife said, that's the, 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 the way that the reap vision is broken down is that we can come to know God. That those in your family unsaved loved ones, maybe in your workplace, they can come to know Jesus Christ. It is the will of God that every person is born again. So that's a number one. Number two, when they're born again, that they can find freedom delivered from every shackle of the enemy, every power of darkness broken over their life, and they can experience the freedom and the liberty that comes. And then number three, that they can discover all their giftings, their purpose. Why was I born? Why were you born? There's a reason why you were born. You, and let me tell you, you're not a mistake. You are not the accident they said you were. Well, that you were an accident. No, not in the eyes and in the plans and in the heart of God. You were never an accident. So there's a purpose for you. And then number four, to help everybody know that they can make a difference. And that's why we're here. That's and, you know, I've often thought about it. We could have been in any part of the world. We could have been in Italy, in Sweden, in Australia, uh, you know, in Alaska, uh, in Panama City, you know. I don't know. There's many diverse places in the whole wide world. But God put us right here in South Africa. And then not only that, but we could have been in Apumalanga. We could have been in Vintuk, Namibia. We could have been in George, you know, down in the Eastern Cape, Transcar, I don't know. But God chose to put us right here in Durban. He put you in Durban. So why? So that we can make a difference together. Right. Amen. Amen. So you're going to pray with the I'm folks. I'm going to pray. Tonight, All right. Your take home tonight is keep making Jesus the president of your life and not just a resident. And you'll go from carnal to spiritual in the word of God. God bless you. All right. Well, let's pray right now over every person. Father, I just thank you for every believer. Those of, of the folks right now that are watching, I don't know what kind of a day they had today. 
But I thank you that this word has come and I thank you that there's been a a refreshing, the wind of the spirit coming in, quickening every life, every family, every person watching right now on the various platforms, God, that you have quickened, that you have moved upon supernaturally. I want to thank you, God, that, you know, this is about checking our hearts, seeing where we are. And I pray that there would be that passion, that zeal to go from the 30-fold to the 60-fold to the 100-fold, that there is so much more that you have in store for us, Lord. And tonight we cover every single person, family, Lord, uh, every family, every husband, every mother, every wife, every father, every child. We cover them tonight in the precious blood of the Lamb, and we speak your blessing in Jesus' mighty name. Amen Amen. and amen. Well, we thoroughly enjoyed uh, this time together with you. you. It's been 35 minutes, so we didn't want to keep it too long uh, because we want to respect your time and your daughter as well. Uh, But from my wife and myself, uh, we love you. you We'll see you Sunday morning. If you can, come on at 8 o'clock with us. The more that we can get on, the better. We're going to have a great time together. And then we have a free service where we chat with you. That's it. So come a little bit early. And yeah. it's like a shaking hands at the door. But a shaking of the hands at the door. But yeah. we're not shaking your hands physically because we're not allowed to. But as you jump online, we want to say hello to you yeah. and say that we love you and miss you. We are missing you and we're yeah. looking forward to when we can get together. Um, and I know that it's there was work soon. today. We got the, some of the chairs. Yes, the balance, balance of the chairs, of the chairs, the chairs for the new today. dome arrived. Yes. So that's so happening. And Monday um, they're going to start putting them in. So we'll post on Facebook when that starts happening. So and we're exciting. hoping that when we can have mass gatherings again, we'll just be able to go straight into yes. the dome well, and have the biggest party, party ever. Uh, ever, ever. All right. So we look forward to doing that together with you. But until next time, we love you and God bless you. Bye-bye.